graduation in the Masters of Educational Technology program at Boise State University. I'm from Enterprise, Alabama. I've taught 8th and 9th grade world history at Dolphin Junior High School for the past four years, including co-taught classes with a special education teacher for the past three years. I entered the Educational Technology Program at Boise State University in January of 2010 and will graduate in December of 2011. This website is my electronic portfolio which showcases my growth in knowledge and in the field of educational technology and provides reflection and review of this knowledge gained. Within my rationale paper, you will find links to artifacts I am most proud of developing over the past two years within this program. In this reflection video, I will discuss my growth as an educator through my most significant experiences, meaningful projects, and how knowledge gained within this program has impacted my teaching. I like to call these my aha moments. The four main aha moments I wish to discuss within this video involve the use of hardware, the use of software, learning theories, and implementation. I felt spoiled as my school just received a $125,000 technology grant the same month I began the master's program at Boise State University. My classroom quickly became equipped with a student response system, a high-resolution LCD projector, interactive whiteboards, and a smart board. I also had access to four Kodak flip cams, six document cameras, and a mobile laptop cart with 30 computers. One of my most significant aha moments came in the form of EdTech's 506 Instructional Message Design class. In this class, I developed a culminating collaborative project for my 8th grade world history class utilizing the Kodak flip cam and mobile laptop cart. In creating this unit, my goal was to help learners fine-tune the life skills of working collaboratively and being effective communicators. I also wanted students to be exposed to technology skills needed within the video production process as ninth grade teachers within my school had already begun developing lessons and activities utilizing the Kodak flip cameras. The World History Wrap-Up in Five project ties all major ancient civilizations together with utilizing the Kodak flip camera to develop a public service announcement about ancient world history. Within this unit, I developed a learning activity that concentrated more on developing the knowledge and skills on the hardware, not my specific content area. This unit takes place over a three-week time period where students will first concentrate on the organization of prior knowledge for materials for their PSAs. After students have completed all of those aspects of the unit, they will begin to learn how to utilize the Kodak flip camera. This hardware is new to many students within this school and this process will help them greatly in their ninth grade year. By eliminating learning a new historical aspect within the same learning activity as learning how to use a new piece of hardware, students have the ability to concentrate on the hands-on integration process of utilizing this new hardware. For a more in-depth look at this project, please visit my artifacts table to find the World History Wrap-Up link. By providing instruction where the learning activity focused more on the skills needed to use the hardware itself, students could concentrate on the development of those skills without pressure from the other learning objectives while reviewing for their final exam within creating this project. The arsenal of software I learned about through the Educational Technology Program has allowed me to design, de design and develop digital age learning experiences and facilitate and inspire students and teachers learning and creativity. My aha moment at number two comes from the knowledge gained in developing a virtual field trip. 
As a history teacher, I would teach about the past and how learning about the past is beneficial to all mankind. By providing students the opportunity to travel back in time to ancient civilization through web-based instruction, I can bring history to life. Involving students in the exploration of unique and or historical locations from around the world enriches students' learning experience. My virtual field trip, Home Sweet Home, allows students to review the cultural hearths of civilizations and determine which location they believe would be the most beneficial to settle in. I utilize numerous softwares in the development of this website, including Adobe Dreamweaver, HTML code, and a pre-designed cascading style sheet. I helped develop the original lesson plan with Ms. Carrie Henniger, my cooperating teacher, during my internship in 8th grade world history. We created static displays made of clay and printed packets of information from each civilization, carefully removing the names of each with correction fluid. This was a very time-consuming process, and with no place in the classroom to store the clay models, we had to throw them away after the activity, knowing this process would have to be done all over again if we intended to recreate this lesson next year. When creating this as an intern, I dreamed of turning this into a web-based instruction activity, but lacked the know-how. With the knowledge gained from Educational Technology 502, the Internet for Educators, I gained the knowledge needed to develop this into a virtual field trip. By changing this lesson into a web-based activity, students gained access to more resources and visuals to determine which site they deemed most suitable. Creating a way for students to travel back in time is one of the greatest assets a history teacher now has available thanks to virtual field trips such as Home Sweet Home. Taking an idea or a lesson that was almost too time consuming to recreate allows for the implementation with ease and provides for an interesting day in history classes traveling back in time. In the virtual field trip Home Sweet Home, students were able to view six cultural hearths to determine which location they believed would be most suitable to set up. Students then were to develop a slideshow explaining why they choose, chose this location. By providing web-based instruction, I had the opportunity to expose students to civilizations from long ago and store this lesson with ease for annual usage. What I am most proud of through the development of this virtual field trip is my ability to demonstrate to teachers that the wheel does not have to be reinvented in developing technology-centered instruction. Of course, effort is involved, but an overhaul of ideas or simply trashing all your old lesson plans is not what is needed to incorporate technology into the classroom. By converting the classroom activities into web-based lessons, I removed many elements of limitation on myself and the lesson. This virtual field trip has made my life easier as all I have to do each year is check to make sure that all the links are functioning and assign it to my students. With the use of virtual field trips, I have been able to improve the quality of presenting history to my students. about how people learn is another beneficial aspect to being in the educational technology program at Boise State University. As a current educator, I was familiar with the basic learning theories and how to apply them within my own classroom, but, did not, but not with the practice of integrating the technology available within my classroom. With an EdTech 504 Theoretical Foundations of Educational Technology, I was able to research the engagement theory and how it could be used in a social science classroom. Research synthesis papers such as the engagement theory applied in social science classrooms showcases how dedicated I am to researching learning theories that directly relate to educational technology. With the technology possibilities available to me, I learned I should be creating individualized student-centered lessons. A statement made by Dr. Perkins the first week of EdTech 504 of most educators believe they focus on student-centered lessons yet truly do not kept coming back to haunt me 
as the type of lessons that I wanted to, to utilize were not seeming to fit with the learning theories that I was researching. As I progressed throughout this course, I began researching the constructivist engagement theory. My, I'm not one of those teachers that only thinks she's creating student-centered lessons views came back to haunt me. My rose-colored glasses of the types of lessons I believe to be constructed versus the reality of the types of learning that were taking place within my classroom had been removed. In order to become a better teacher, I realized that I must take the theories of learning more seriously and applying them into lessons. To maximize learning, I began utilizing these theories to their fullest potential, and by learning more about the cognitivist approach, I feel I am better equipped to truly develop these student-centered lessons. My research synthesis paper on the engagement theory in social science classrooms involves a theory developed by Keesley and Schneiderman. This allowed me to develop ideas about how to produce more engaging lessons within social science classrooms and help me in putting into action the type of educator I truly wish to be. You can find this paper on my artifacts table as I'm very proud of all the knowledge I gained about the engagement theory as it applies to social science classrooms. I researched many views from different people and learned a lot throughout this process. To improve my teaching and implementation of technology through the research process and apply that to develop my own argument and thesis was very beneficial in my own learning and instruction. moment I would like to share with you is the many ways I learned how to implement technology within my classroom. The implementation of technology is a very beneficial aspect I learned while in the EdTech program. For this I would like to discuss, to discuss the knowledge gained through EdTech 533 YouTube for Educators. Before entering this class I had utilized YouTube within my own classroom but had never developed my own video. I had a thirst for knowledge on the benefits of YouTube within my classroom and wanted to be able to share this knowledge with other teachers. By developing my own YouTube channel, I felt a sense of obligation to produce educational videos. While in this course, I realized that YouTube videos could be beneficial within professional development as well. I began developing ideas of how to share my knowledge gained through the utilization of technology, not just with my students, but other educators as well. By providing a teacher and student friendly YouTube channel, I hope to promote and facilitate learning in a whole new way. For a more detailed look at my personal YouTube channel, please visit my artifacts table for the link. By developing a YouTube channel and videos, I was able to apply knowledge gained not only to benefit my students, but fellow educators as well. I can demonstrate how YouTube can be used as a vehicle to provide professional development to educators. In conclusion, I hope you were able to see how beneficial I believe the educational technology program at Boise State University has been to me. This program has forever changed my perception of educational technology and the benefits of its use within the learning environment. Educational technology must be integrated jointly in order for the ability to produce 21st century skills needed by today's learners. Educators must provide the opportunities for students to gain these through the usage of hardware, software, research and learning theories, and the implementation process in order to create productive members of society. Thank you for watching and I hope that you enjoyed learning about my experiences within Boise State University's Educational Technology Program.
Oh, it just went off. No. Okay. All right. Cole, do you remember where Philip the second was from? What country? Can you tell me that? Can you show me? Spain. There we go. That's what I'm talking about.